Did you know that Albert Einstein's brain was stolen just seven hours after his death? Despite his specific instructions for his remains to be cremated and his ashes scattered secretly to avoid idolization, the pathologist on call, Thomas Harvey, took his brain without permission. He managed to get a reluctant and retroactive approval from Einstein's son, Hans Albert, with the stipulation that any investigation would be conducted solely in the interest of science. Harvey then lost his job at the Princeton Hospital and took the brain to Philadelphia, where it was divided into 240 pieces and preserved in Siloidon. The brain was stored in Harvey's basement, and after his wife threatened to dispose of it, Harvey took it with him to the Midwest. He worked in various jobs and tried to study the brain in his spare time, but he lost his medical license in 1988. He then moved to Lawrence of Kansas, took a job in a plastic extrusion factory, and befriended the beat poet William Burroughs. Despite the unusual journey of Einstein's brain, studies have shown that it was not particularly special in terms of its physical properties. Albert Einstein's brain was removed and preserved by pathologist Dr. Thomas Harvey during an unauthorized autopsy in 1955. Despite Einstein's wishes for his remains to be cremated, Harvey believed the brain could provide insights into Einstein's intelligence. After the act, Einstein's family allowed Harvey to keep the brain for scientific research. Harvey stored the brain in jars and boxes for decades, conducting studies and sending samples to other researchers. The aim was to identify any unique features that could explain Einstein's intellect. However, Harvey's methods were met with skepticism, and he did not gain significant recognition. He eventually lost his job, faced criticism, and divided the brain into fragments for distribution to researchers worldwide. Numerous studies have been conducted on Einstein's brain over the years. Some researchers claim to find differences, such as a slightly larger parietal lobe associated with mathematical and spatial reasoning. However, these findings remain debatable and have not been universally accepted. So, the next time you think about Einstein's genius, remember that it wasn't all about the brain, 